Hello, I'm Felix Gardenhire, past master of Philadelphia Lodge number 74, and I'm the worshipful grand historian of the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. And my name is Robert L. Eximenes Jr., past master of Light on Wood Lodge number 45, worshipful director of history and archives for the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of the state of Pennsylvania. Today, we'd like to take you through our museum lobby and our library and archives at the lower level of the Masonic Temple here at 4301 North Broad Street. And we'd like to start with some of the artifacts in the wall of the outer avenues of the museum, and then we'll take you inside the museum. So we'd like to start right here at this level. We have our archive prep room. And in the hallway of the archive prep room, we have an abstract of one of our uh, proceedings from 1874 through 1877. But we made it almost like a portrait. And so we show that. And it is an abstract of the proceedings of the Most Worshipful Prince Hall, I mean, excuse me, Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons, ancient York Masons, state of Pennsylvania. We actually had two Grand Lodges at that time, and we merged back together in 1882. As we walk through, we also have an overhead shot of Prince Hall Public School. It was the first school in America named after our illustrious founder, Prince Hall. And this overhead shot was from a 1973 Light Magazine cover and it shows the entire school. Now here is the outer foyer of our, at the lower level of our museum and archive. And we use this space to show and display a lot of, uh, a lot of pictures and, and uh, Masonic artifacts along our walls. In this section, we'd like to talk about our Masonic uh, military men. We also have here, showing the military, we have some of the Civil War U.S. Colored Troop reenactors. Also, we have um, a Mumford Court Marine. He is past master Philip H. Haroot. He was in uh, Limel Guggen's Lodge number 129, and he was one of the original Mumford Court Marines, and so we sort of honor him here as a military man. We also have uh, many members of the craft who were Tuskegee Airmen, and we sort of uh, have just a little makeup of the Tuskegee Airmen uh, as artifacts in this section also. All Wars Memorial of the U.S. Colored Troops and Soldiers. This uh, monument was built around in the 1920s and it was put near Memorial Hall in West Philadelphia, and it was relegated to the back avenues of Memorial Hall, out of really the area where people could view it. Uh, there was an effort by Prince Hall Masons and to have it moved to the Parkway, 20th and the Parkway in Philadelphia, and that's where it now stands. And so that monument now is in a prominent place in Philadelphia. Okay, so here we have a charter of the most, uh, of the first Masonic District Temple Association. And that's when we uh, started out at 17th and Diamond. At that time, our Grand Master was Hobson R. Reynolds, who also was, uh, who became the Grand Exalted Ruler in the 1950s of the uh, Elks. But, here, he was our Grand Master at the time, and this is really a charter, which is usually issued by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and it has all the signatures of people when we bought the Masonic Hall at uh, 17th and Diamond uh, back in, I believe, uh, 1949 is the uh, year that this charter is. And this is one of the original charters with all the seals from the state of Pennsylvania. We call this um, 
our wall of past grand secretaries. William H. Miller, he was the grand secretary. First, he was the past grand master in 1883, once we merged back together. We had actually two grand lodges that had split apart. They came back together and reunited in 1882. He was the grand master or elected grand master during that time. As soon as he went out as grand master, he became the grand secretary and remained the grand secretary for 36 years. Right below him was his successor. And that is John S. Watson of Philadelphia Lodge number 74. John S. Watson died in 1936. A year later, William H. Miller died in 1937 at 107 years old and was the oldest Grand Master or oldest Prince Hall Mason at that time in the United States. Between the two of them, they served as Grand Secretary for 51 years. And we're going to enter our Grand Lodge Museum at this time. Mostly the things in this display is really our origin. I first like to point to Prince Hall, who's right in the middle. This is a, a, a depiction and picture of Prince Hall. And of course, we're the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge, so this is like our founding. But then our original charter, he got our original charter from the Premier Grand Lodge of England, and that was in 1784, it took three years to get here. And we have a replica of the original charter to the right here. I mean, to the left, excuse me, of Prince Hall's portrait. To the right, we have uh, the original minutes when we were formed as a Grand Lodge. And these original minutes, we were formed in 1815 as a Grand Lodge. So those are our original minutes. But as a lodge, we came under African Lodge 459 in Boston, and they named the lodge here in Philadelphia after some urging from uh, Absalom Jones and Peter Mantour and others we formed a lodge here in Philadelphia, and it was known as African Lodge 459 Philadelphia. And we actually have the first copy of their minutes from their minute book. They were actually formed in the springtime, but their minute book didn't start until St. John the Evangelist Day in 1797. And we also have all the early churches in Pennsylvania. Of course, Absalom Jones and Richard Allen founded some of the early churches. Uh, Absalom Jones um, and Richard Allen actually attended St. George Methodist Church. And um, the story goes that they were rele relegated to the balcony, pulled from their knees while they were praying, and told to that as African Americans, they had to sit in the balcony. They couldn't worship down in the sanctuary where the other Methodist people were actually uh, sitting. So they left St. George's and started their own churches. Richard Allen remained a Methodist and started the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And Absalom Jones, um, started the African Episcopal Church, but it wasn't Methodist. And of course that became the African uh, Episcopal Church of St. Thomas. And that is pictured here. And then we have the African Methodist Episcopal Church, Mother Bethel at Sixth and Lombard. And that's Richard Allen's church. This is a portrait of Cyrus Bustle, who lived from 1732 to 1806. 
He was one of the co-founders of the Free African Society. Most people know that the Free African Society was started by Richard Allen and Absalom Jones, but he was also a co-founder. And he was born of white, black, and Native American descent. He brought uh, freedom, uh, and he bought his freedom and became a baker for bread during the revolutionary troops. I believe he fed the revolutionary troops at uh, Valley Forge uh, at the time. And uh, he also was a founder of Free African Society, as Ford uh, mentioned. And later, he opened a school for black children living there. He is the great, great, two greats, I believe. He's the great, great grandfather of Paul Robeson. Paul Robeson's mother was uh, Cyrus Bustle's great granddaughter. A portrait of Francis Johnson, one of the first uh, master musicians in um, the United States. And he's known for his very unique uh, form, even though he played, uh, he was multi-talented and played several different instruments. And he used to do command performances all the way back to England, as we would say. Also, just a little small picture here is a picture of Robert Bobo. He's a caterer, and he was at African Lodge 459, as well as Frank Johnson. So they all were members of African Lodge 459 way early when we started here in Pennsylvania. The other portrait we have, of course, is of Richard Allen. Um, and of course, he is the founder of the AME Church, the first bishop of the AME Church. And he was uh, a little younger than Prince Hall. Prince Hall died at about the age of 71. Absalom Jones was about 11 or 12 years younger than Prince Hall. And Richard Allen was about 11 or 12 years younger than Absalom Jones. And they all died around the age of 71 or 72. Okay. So as we move past that, we also have a portrait of James Fort. And James Fortin was a sailmaker. He was our first senior deacon of African Lodge 459. And he went on to uh, become a, a abolitionist. All his sons and daughters were abolitionists. And he was one of the richest men in uh, the United States or richest black men in the United States at the time. And he was certainly very significant to the growth of masonry and free men here in Philadelphia and in the state of Pennsylvania. Talk about Absalom Jones, which is the centerpiece of this wall. And Absalom Jones is, of course, our first Grand Master, 1815, but he also was the first Worship Master of African Lodge 459. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the old and some of the new. This right here is one of our pride and joys. These are the proceedings. Now, for those who might not know, the proceedings are the documentations from the mid-year and annual sessions that once recorded, after the session is over, they're put together and put into binders to keep for prosperity. These are some of the oldest ones that we have within our library. This particular one is from 1869. We have one right here from 1882. And then we have another one from 1882. I mentioned the date because when we go around to the other side, we have a whole collection of proceedings starting from 1929 up to the present, minus about three that are in production right now and we're still waiting to get them. We also have copies of all of the proceedings that we had. And it's important to know that without knowing where your history is, if you ever need to go back to find out what happened and you don't have a copy of it, then you're lost. So our goal here 
is to get as much information as we can in book form. Some of the old and some of the new.